Hello, everyone. Welcome to CCUF International. We are here with Emily today to talk about more about diversity. So take it away, Emily. Thank you very much, Tess. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Emily, and I'm an international admissions and recruitment officer here at Carleton. Um, I also graduated from Carleton, so I studied criminology and criminal justice. And I grew up about six hours away from Ottawa, which is where Carleton is located. So I'm from Canada. I'm from Ontario. I'm not an international student, but I am here to answer any questions that you have um, and to let you know what it's like to study at Carleton as an international student. So I'm going to uh, give you this presentation, talk about our programs, talk about the services and the supports that we offer to students. And then at the end of this presentation, I'm going to have some time to answer your questions. So if you think of anything, you can type them into the chat um, and then I'll have some time at the end of this presentation to answer them. So first of all, I want to talk about why you should study in Canada. Canada has approximately 100 publicly funded universities um, and publicly funded means that the government is um, giving us money and they're investing in all of our universities, which uh, creates a quality assurance piece in our education. So you know that wherever you go uh, to study in Canada, you are going to be receiving a quality education. So we are internationally recognized. Um, we have many high quality institutions. We are also a very multicultural country and a very welcoming country. Um, so we have people who come from all over the world to study here, um, which gives us a very diverse population. We also have a very dynamic learning environment. So this means that while you're going to be in the classroom learning and studying about whatever program you choose to study, you're also going to be encouraged to go outside of the classroom. You're going to get to have work opportunities and different experiential learning opportunities, such as traveling to other countries as part of your work at Carleton. We also have many flexible programs. So this means that um, your degree is going to be very customizable. So maybe you're interested in two very different subjects. Well, you can take those subjects and you can create a double major. So you can actually study two different things that may not even be related to each other. Or maybe you're really interested in two areas that are related to each other and you think that they would complement each other very nicely. So it's really whatever you want to make it. And we also have many employment opportunities, but I'm going to talk more about that um, later in this presentation. So for those of you who don't know where um, Carleton is located, we are located in Ottawa and Ottawa is located in Ontario. Now, Ottawa is Canada's capital city. And when you think of a capital city, you might think of a really, really big city with a lot of people, but we're actually quite a small city. We're a small capital city compared to other cities in the world that are capital cities. We have a population of about 1 million people. And we are located on the east side of Canada, uh, sort of between Toronto and Montreal, which are two other major cities. So Ottawa has some really beautiful landscapes, many beautiful green spaces. And I know that many people think of Canada as being really cold, but we actually have four distinct seasons in Ottawa. So um, we have winter, of course, um, but we also have summer. So there's many different and it depends on the season that we have. So as you can see here um, in some of these pictures, the, the, I'm not sure if the slide has changed yet, but if not, you'll be able to see in just a second. Um, we have uh, winters where we get lots of snow, which gives people the opportunity to go outside, to skate, to ski. Many of our international students actually learn to skate for the first time when they come to Canada. Um, people snowshoe for the first time. People go cross-country skiing for the first time. So there's lots of really cool things that go on throughout the winter. And then there's also lots of fun stuff to do throughout the spring, the summer, and the fall. Um, there's lots of different festivals that go on throughout the summer. As you can see here, there's fireworks going off. We like to celebrate Canada Day, which happens every summer. Um, and there's, we have a vibrant market um, located in our downtown area. And there's lots of really great um, restaurants and cafes um, and other places that you can go to. So living in Ottawa, we have what's called the capital advantage. We have our federal government right here in Ottawa, which gives us lots of opportunities and a wealth of resources that won't be available to you in any other city in Canada. Um, it is a beautiful, livable city, which is very vibrant and fun. 
Um, like I mentioned, we have many, many different uh, areas of Ottawa with, with great restaurants, clubs, cafes, markets, and festivals. Because we're located in Ottawa, we have many rich opportunities, um, especially for students. So many of our students actually are given work opportunities while they're students um, to work with the government or to work with um, our high tech sector, a company within our high tech sector, um, which is actually known as the Silicon Valley of the North. There's about a thousand different um, tech companies located uh, in the west end of our city. So I touched on where we are located, um, which is Ottawa, but I just want to give you sort of a snapshot as to what our campus looks like. So hopefully you can see the picture now. If not, you will be able to see it in a few seconds. Um, this is a picture of our campus and our campus is located right in the heart of Ottawa. We're about a 10 minute drive from downtown and we have some really beautiful borders. So on the one side, we have um, the Rideau River. On another side, we have the Rideau Canal, and the Rideau Canal freezes over in the winter to be the world's largest outdoor skating rink, and that's actually where a lot of our students will skate. Um, our international students will go and learn how to skate for the first time. There's always stands along the canal that will give you um, different dessert treats and hot chocolate. Um, our campus is broken up into three sections. So we have our academic buildings all in one area, so that's where you'll have all of your classes. Then we have all of our residence buildings in another area. We have 11 different residence buildings. And then in the third area, we have our athletic facilities, which you as a student will have access to. And then one of my favorite things about Carleton is actually, you can't see it in this picture, but it's our underground tunnel system. So every single building on campus is connected through heated underground tunnels, which makes it uh, very accessible for all of our students, but it also makes it really nice in the winter when it's cold outside or when it's snowing for students who live in residence especially you can just go into the tunnels and go to class and you don't even have to bundle up which is really awesome so i've talked a little bit about studying in canada but now i'm going to get more specific and talk about why carlton so at Carleton, we have a very broad choice of programs. We have five different faculties. So a faculty is essentially um, a broad area of study. And then each of our faculties has more specific programs that you can choose to study um, with many different majors and concentrations and specializations that you can choose from. You can customize your degree and tailor your degree so that you can choose a major and you might be able to choose a minor as well if, you, if there's another area that you wanna add to your degree. You will be taught by award-winning faculty. So a lot of our professors and faculty members are uh, leaders in their field. Um, some of them have uh, conducted some cutting edge research. Some of them are working in their field and are very prominent. There's a lot of opportunity for hands-on experiential learning. So like I said, while you will be learning in the classroom, you will also get to go outside of the classroom, um, gain some really valuable work experience um, and, and other opportunities such as traveling to different places um, and completing different projects uh, as part of your classes at Carleton. So with our flexible programs, um, it's, it's quite easy to uh, tailor your degree to whatever you would like. So for example, if you're really interested in studying something like political science, but you're also really passionate about history, you could do a double major if you wanted to. Or if you really wanna focus on political science and take a few other courses in history, then you could minor in history and major in political science. So uh, one of our programs, which is the Bachelor of Arts, actually makes it really easy to customize your degree. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that when I talk about the specific degree. But you can really build a, deg a degree that reflects your interests and prepares you for your career um, and your future opportunities. So here's a list of our 22 undergraduate degree programs. Um, we have some programs that make us very unique. Some of the programs that we are well known for are engineering and journalism. So for journalism, we actually, we were the first school to have a school of journalism in Canada, and we have the largest school of journalism in Canada as well. And being in Ottawa, there's so many opportunities for our journalism students to cover different stories and topics that are happening um, right here in our own city. 
Now we have 13 streams of engineering and I'll get more into that in a few minutes. Um, but one of the ones that makes us very unique and what we're well known for is aerospace engineering. So if you're interested in the development and design of aircrafts and engines and um, planes, then that might be something that you would be interested in. So the first faculty we have is arts and social sciences. Um, this faculty is a very collaborative, fa collaborative faculty. So um, you'll be able to work with other students. You'll be able to work with professors. Um, your degree is very customizable, like I already mentioned. So if there's a few different areas that you want to study, um, it's quite easy to, to tailor your degree to reflect that. These are um, the majors that you can choose from. So our Bachelor of Arts is one of our biggest programs, and we have 30, over 30 different majors that you can choose from. Uh, and here's a list right here. Many of them offer co-op. Um, and if you don't know what co-op is, it means um, it's basically a work placement or a work opportunity. And I'm going to get more into that um, in just a few minutes. But as you can see, there's so many areas that you can choose from. So you can customize your degree to whatever it is interests you. Next, we have the Faculty of Public Affairs. So the students in the Faculty of Public Affairs are really looking at how um, the world works and how they can make a change and how they can be leaders. So these are different, or these are a few of our degree programs that fall within the Faculty of Public Affairs. As you can see, we have journalism, we have a really unique program um, called Public Affairs and Policy Management, which you won't be able to find at other schools because that is um, a very Carleton specific program. We also have communication and media studies. And I wanna also point out economics because we are the only school in Canada that offers a bachelor in economics. Next, we have our faculty of science. Um, our faculty of science houses our four different science degrees. So we have computer science, health sciences, math, and then our bachelor of science, where there's a many different majors to choose from, including biology, biochemistry, physics, food science, uh, neuroscience, and mental health. So there's lots of areas that you can choose from if you're really interested in science. We also have um, a brand new health sciences building, and we have um, the Science Students Success Center. So this is a, a center specifically for any student who is studying within the Faculty of Science. Um, there's mentors, um, there's lots of help for academics. There's also a student uh, society. So if you want to get to know other students who are in your faculty or who are specifically in your program, then this is a really great way to do so. There's also advisors. So we have professional staff members who are here to help you and make sure that you as a science student are successful. Next, we have our faculty of engineering and design. Um, so this houses our 13 different streams of engineering. Um, some of the streams that we offer are aerospace, um, biomedical, mechanical, electrical, sustainable and renewable energy engineering, um, communications engineering, physics engineering, and a few more. But I just wanted to name a few for you. Now, if you're really interested in designing and developing things, um, and, and maybe you do like the math and science part of it, but maybe you don't necessarily like the math and science part of it, um, we have a few different design schools. So these design schools really allow students to be creative and to develop things and be innovative. So we have architectural studies, uh, we have industrial design, and we have information technology and media production and design. So these programs are within engineering. Some of them do require um, some math prerequisites, um, but they really allow you to be creative um, and to explore the uh, sort of the world of creating things. And our faculty are, are in that teach in these um, schools are award winning and they are they're very interesting and very cool to learn from. I've talked to them, a bunch of them myself, and it makes me wish that I had gone and studied something um, in one of our design schools. Now, the next faculty that we have um, is the Sprott School of Business. Our Sprott School of Business houses our two business degrees. So um, we have international business and we have commerce. For students who are studying commerce, you have a few different areas that you can choose to major in if you would like, and you can choose up to two majors, um, but you don't have to choose anything if you don't want to. So we have uh, different areas such as accounting, finance, entrepreneurship, um, marketing, supply chain management, information systems, and all of these offer co-op, which again, I'm going to talk a bit more about uh, in a few minutes. Now for the international business program, it's really unique and it's really cool because 
it has an international component. So when students are in their third year, they will actually go abroad and study um, in a different country at a different university for that time. Um, and they gain some really valuable experience by learning about how business works in other countries and in other cultures. So those are our five different faculties and uh, that cover our many different programs. Um, if you have any questions about them, please put them in the chat um, and I'm happy to answer them at the end of this presentation. So now I just want to talk a bit about the hands-on learning that we offer. Um, like I said, we do offer many different work opportunities. So we offer co-op, internships, internships, uh, research placements, and field work and practicums so that you can actually take what you're learning inside the classroom and apply it to the real world. So co-op refers to cooperative education. Um, and it's paid work experience. So if you are in a program that offers co-op, then you may choose to participate in co-op. Um, you don't have to, it's not mandatory, but it's some really valuable, you'll gain some really valuable experience. Um, depending on the program that you are studying in, you will either have to complete three work terms or four work terms. Each work term is uh, four months. So anywhere between 12 to 16 months of work is what you will be doing. This usually starts the summer after you complete your second year of studies. And the nice thing about co-op is that, well, there's a bunch of nice things, but one really nice thing is that it's paid full-time work. Um, so it's a really great way to um, finance your studies and, and fund, fund your edu education. You will also be able to network and meet professionals who are uh, working in the field that you're studying in. Uh, it's a great way to see if you really enjoy what you are learning about. Um, maybe you really wanna try learning about a very specific area or you want to try focusing on there and working there. And if you if you find out that you love it, that's awesome. You can continue. But if you find out that maybe it's not for you, then it gives you the opportunity to explore something else. And you don't have to do all of your work terms at the same place. So you can try out different places. Um, however, some students often will do their co-op placements at the same place for all of their work terms. And a lot of the times, um, a lot of the times students will actually be given uh, an, a job offer for when they graduate. So it's a really good way to kind of kickstart your career um, and it builds that stepping stone for you. Here's just uh, a few uh, big names or a few employers that our students will um, work for while they're doing their co-op. So as you can see, engineering students will work for big companies like Stantec uh, or even the government, the National Research uh, Council of Canada. Our commerce students will work at some of the big four accounting firms, so Deloitte, PwC, Ernst & Young, uh, KPMG. And our computer science students will uh, often get their work placement in Ottawa in the high tech sector that we have, uh, working for Microsoft or Amazon or BlackBerry um, or even Shopify. And Shopify has their headquarters right here in Ottawa. So it's really good opportunity for students, especially computer science students. Now, the tuition for international students will range between 29,000 Canadian dollars to about 43,000 Canadian dollars per year, which in US dollars is 23,000 to about 33 or 34,000. Um, and then living expenses, you can estimate to be spending about 11,000, between 11,000 and 12,000 Canadian dollars for the year, um, particularly resident students. So if you're living in residence, this is about the cost of what it will be uh, for the time that you're living in residence. Now, I know that um, this is quite expensive. And so that's why we at Carleton have uh, a very generous scholarship program. And last year, we actually awarded over $28 million in scholarships and bursaries. So we really want to help students um, fund their education. We want you to be able to have these opportunities. And you can start um, taking advantage of these opportunities by earning an entrance scholarship. So for students who are coming straight from high school, or um, even if you've taken a gap year, um, that's totally fine for students who are coming from high school. If you have what we consider an 80% average or higher, you will be el eligible for one of our entrance scholarships. Um, so basically, the higher your marks are, the more money we'll be able to give you. Um, and these scholarships are renewable. So if you maintain at least a 10.0 GPA every single year, um, then we'll be able to give you your scholarship every year. The scholarships are valued between 4,000 Canadian dollars and 16,000 Canadian dollars. Now, entrance scholarships are not the only way that you can fund your education because we also have um, other scholarships such as prestige scholarships. 
These ones require an application, whereas the entrance scholarship does not. So as long as you apply to Carleton, you will be automatically assessed for an entrance scholarship. Whereas for the prestige scholarship, you do have to submit an application and the application is due uh, by June 1st, or sorry, not June 1st, March 1st, every single year. Um, we look for students who have a, an average of 90% or higher. And we want to know um, what extracurricular activities have you done? What experience do you have maybe volunteering or leadership experience and how you've been involved in your community? Um, there's also part-time work available to students, both on campus and off campus, different work study opportunities. Um, we also offer financial literacy and support throughout the year so that you can learn how to manage your money um, in the best way possible. Now for admission, this is probably what, what many of you are actually wondering about. I get this question a lot is, how do I get into Carleton? Well, I want you to know that academic performance is key. So while the requirements do vary depending on the program, um, the thing that we will that we will look at is your grades. Most of our programs only uh, will only look at your grades. Some of our programs do have a supplementary application, and I'm going to touch on that in a minute. Um, but your grades are really what are key. Now, depending on what program you apply to, there's going to be specific prerequisite courses that you need. For example, if you want to apply to engineering, you're going to need to have math and two science courses. However, if you're applying to journalism, you're going to need to have English. And the grade requirements for each program differ as well. So we have a really handy tool on our website. If you go to admissions.carleton.ca slash international, um, you'll be able to fill out your education background, the curriculum that you've studied in, and the program that you're interested in. And it will bring you to a page that tells you exactly what you need in order to be eligible for that program. Now, we do have uh, a few programs with a supplementary application. These programs include social work, industrial design, architecture studies, um, music. So um, for these programs, you will need to submit a portfolio. Some of them include an audition piece for music, for example. Some of them include um, you, uh, reference letters, for example, social work. Um, some of them have essay type questions or written questions that you need to answer. And those programs usually have an earlier deadline. So it's important to make note if you want to apply to one of those programs. Other than that, if you're not applying to a program that has a supplementary application, um, references and personal statements and SAT scores are not required. Now, also in order to study in Canada, you do need to prove your English proficiency. So you can either do that by uh, demonstrating that you have studied for a minimum of three years full time in an English speaking country, such as um, the US or the UK, uh, or in a fully English curriculum. So um, if you can demonstrate that, then you won't, then that will be perfect for your English requirement. If you cannot demonstrate that, if you have not been studying three years full time um, in English, then you will be required to submit an English language test score. Uh, so we, were, we accept many different test, uh, tests, such as IELTS, TOEFL, and KALE. Um, and you can find all of the different tests and the scores that you need on our website, um, which is admissions.carleton.ca slash ESL. So there's different score requirements for the test for each test. Um, and, and there's minimum scores that you need uh, in order to gain entry with no ESL requirement. And there's also minimum uh, scores that you need in order to gain entry with an ESL requirement. So you can learn all about that on our website. Uh, for example, if you're taking IELTS, you'll need a minimum of a 6.5 on the test uh, and a minimum of 6.0 in each band. So this is all laid out on our website uh, and you can go have a look there if you want to see which tests we offer or see which tests we accept. Now, the application process to Carleton is, is it might seem like a little bit scary, but it's actually quite simple. Um, there's four steps. So you can complete the online application either through uh, Carleton directly on our website or through o the Ontario University's Application Centre or OUAC. It really doesn't matter which one you, uh, you choose to apply with. I do recommend that if you're applying to multiple universities in Ontario that you apply through OUAC because it gives you three applications. So you can apply to Carleton and then you have two applications that you can um, submit to another school if you would like to. 
So when you're completing the online application, you'll be asked to submit your documents. So this will include uh, transcripts and English language test scores. You will be able to monitor your application on your Carlton 360 account, which will be created for you. Um, you can either create it yourself to apply, or if you apply through OUAC, you will, uh, a Carlton 360 account will be created for you. And then this is where you will uh, be notified. You'll be notified via email when a decision has been made, and you will go into your Carlton 360 account to view your decision. Now at Carleton, we have lots of different um, support for students, especially for international students. Um, so we have the International Student Services Office who are here to help you even before you arrive at Carleton. We have certified immigration advisors. So if you have questions about um, securing a visa or you need any help, they are here to support you. Um, we have different orientation programs for students. So when you arrive in Canada, we want to help you get settled um, and we want you to be welcomed and, and to get to know the Carleton community um, and about life in Canada. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. We also have lots of academic support for students. Um, we have both academic support delivered by peers and mentors and also by our professional staff. Um, we have different wellness initiatives and support that goes on like mental health support, um, and just lots of ways that you can get involved as a student and enjoy life on campus. Uh, this is These are some people who work at our International Student Services Office. So you can see here um, some very friendly faces um, who are here to help you and support you and provide you with a really fun um, university experience. We also have over 300 clubs and societies. Uh, so if you're really interested um, in joining a team or a club, or uh, maybe you want to get to know other other uh, students in your program, then a society might be something that you want to join. Uh, so you'll get the op uh, opportunity to get to know what's available for you uh, and to join any club that you want to join and to participate in that. And it's a really good way to meet other students um, who are like-minded and who are interested in the same things that you are. Now, we're almost at the end of this presentation, but I just want to cover residence before we finish up. Um, and residence is something that will be guaranteed to you if you are coming from high school. So you don't need to apply for it. You will be automatically given a spot in one of our 11 residence buildings. And our residence includes a meal plan. So you have an all access meal plan. It's completely unlimited for the whole year. Um, and, and living in residence is something that we recommend because it's really, really uh, convenient living on campus. And it's also a really great way to meet other first year students um, and to meet other international students as well. Um, we have lots of different options for food and we have many different accommodations. Um, there's always vegetarian options, always vegan, halal, gluten-free, um, dairy-free, whatever it is that you need, we will have it. And there's a rotating menu. So it's actually different every single day and you'll get lots of variety um, and lots of healthy food options as well. So I invite you to sign up for Carlton 360, which you can do by going to 360.carlton.ca. Um, to create an account, you can explore our different programs, you can explore different events that are coming up. Uh, if you want to book an appointment with one of our international admission and recruitment officers, you can do that. Um, so it's kind of a really great way to get started um, on your Carleton journey. So that's 360.carleton.ca. Now, this brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, so I just want to invite you to um, stay connected with us. Uh, sorry, I'm just skipping ahead to my um, my contact slide. So stay connected with us. You can email me at any time. Um, my email will be up on the screen in just a second if it's not already there for you. Um, you can you can email me. I'm happy to set up an appointment with you uh, to answer any of your questions. Um, so thank you so much for having me here today. And uh, I will take any questions that you have now. Perfect. Thank you, Emily. So it looks like we have a fair amount of questions. We're also joined with Rhonda to help answer some questions. So starting at the very top, um, can you help me with the application process so that my application can be successful? So is there any application help? Yeah. That... Perfect. Go ahead. Um, yes, there, there is. Um, so my email is up on the screen right now and you are more than welcome to uh, send me an email and I can hop on a call with you and sort of walk you through the application process. We also have um, some step-by-step -step how to apply videos on our website. 
So uh, if you go to admissions.carlton.ca, there's going to be a how to apply section. Um, I actually created the videos and there's three different ones. So it kind of breaks down the application process for you. Um, and, and if you'd like, I can also chat with you in our meeting. Um, and I can, I can let you know what the different requirements are for the program that you're interested in. Um, and that way you can be successful and you can make sure that you have everything that you need. Thank you so much. So the next question, um, how can you get a scholarship from Canada as an international student? So how do you apply to scholarships that aren't already uh, offered automatically? That's a great question. Um, so here at Carleton, we do offer the entrance scholarships, which I, I mentioned um, in the in the presentation. Um, we have a few other scholarships for international students. And so um, if you go to our website again, which is admissions.carleton.ca slash scholarships, um, you can see the different ones that are available for international students. They do require an application, but there's a few different ones that have different requirements for students. Um, and so that's a really great way to fund your education or to to find some more opportunities um, to to help pay for your your studies. Um, and then I always recommend to students to actually do a Google search. Um, that's what I did when I was a student. I just Google search different scholarships that are available. Um, and then sometimes you get some external scholarships or some companies that are looking for students who are um, who are going to university and they want to help students out. So I always recommend that. Um, I also just want to take a second and introduce Rhonda, um, who is on screen with me here. Um, Rhonda is from our Sprott School of Business. Um, Rhonda, maybe I'll give you a, um, a chance to introduce yourself just quickly. Sorry, I just wanted to take myself off mute. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm Rhonda Kelly. And I'm just considering joining the Bachelor of Commerce program or the Bachelor of International Business program that you um, introduced. So feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, and, and work actually I'm, as the for students um, who come into the School of Business as well. So not only can I chat with you to you accepting an offer with us and so would be working with you during your first year at our school. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rhonda. Um, so yes, anyone who's interested in business, please, please um, let us know because Rhonda um, is the expert in all of our business programs and can help you out. Um, okay, Tess, I'm ready for the next question. <laughs> Perfect. Um, some students want to know, does Carleton offer fully funded scholarships? We do not offer any fully funded scholarships for international students. Um, the highest scholarship that we offer covers the uh, the full tuition for our domestic students, which is about 12, it's up to $12,000 per year. So um, if, if you were to receive the highest prestige scholarship, um, it would cover a significant portion of your tuition, which would be about $12,000, but we don't offer any fully funded scholarships. Perfect, thank you. Uh, we've got another question. So I was wondering how it works to transfer credits if I'm coming to Quebec with a CEGEP degree to do my undergrad in Ontario. So maybe you could treat credits in general. Absolutely. Um, so that's a great question. And if you're coming from CEGEP, if you've completed at least one year, um, then you may be eligible for transfer credit. So for students who have completed any post-secondary studies, whether it be in Canada or outside of Canada, um, you may be eligible for transfer credit. Now, we do try to transfer as many credits as possible, um, but, but transferring credit will really depend on... Um, how relevant the courses are to your courses at Carleton or to your degree at Carleton, um, the grades that you got in those courses, and uh, the institution or institutions that uh, you attended. So when you apply to Carleton, we will ask to see um, some of your course descriptions so that we can determine whether or not um, the class is closely related to what you will be taking at Carleton. And then we will let you know uh, after we review those what credits will be transferred over and how many will be transferred over. 
Thank you so much. Um, Rhonda, a couple of Is there a best way that they can contact you if they have any questions related to the business? Yeah. Rhonda, our H O Kelly at Hilton.ca. See that there were questions about graduate programs. I'm not I work with the undergraduate students, but happy to make the connection to our graduate program coordinators. And I do. Perfect. Thank you so much. I see somebody who has a question about um, international business, and there's a way to study, as Emily alluded international different way. Bachelor of Commerce and concentrate in international business, so kind of specialize in that area. Students also can take Bachelor of International, which is very different, a huge cultural component. Um, and students not only study business, language, Tory travel abroad in their third year. So to internet and um, they can feel free to include my email address in the chat. Perfect. Thank you. So it looks like we have a few more questions. Um, what kind of documents do you need to submit when applying to Carleton? That's a great question. And it's a question I get often. Um, the documents that you'll need to submit are your transcripts. So um, if you're coming from high school, your secondary school transcripts. Um, if you've already completed post-secondary studies at all, you'll be required to submit those transcripts as well. Um, and then your English language test score. So if you've taken IELTS or TOEFL, um, then that is also what you'll need to submit in terms of documents. Other than that, um, you won't need to submit anything right away. If we need anything from you, um, we will ask for it, um, such as if you're applying for transfer credit, then we'll ask for your course descriptions. But really, it's just your transcripts and your ESL test score that we'll need. Awesome. Thank you. So the next one, how easy is it to travel in and around Ottawa? That's a great question. Um, maybe Rhonda, do you actually want to touch on that? Because Rhonda's lived in Ottawa much longer than I have. So maybe maybe Rhonda can touch on that. I actually outside of Ottawa City. Um, but yes, I've lived here uh, my entire love the city. There's a few different ways I'm not quite sure um what students whether they're asking about maybe um the which we have, we have an O train. We're actually very closely to the airport, um, international airports. Also, uh, for anybody who's coming out of the country, we are located to the airport. Um, we have trains that come into the city, but I feel like they're looking for information how you train. I'd say, system and then the LRT. Um, Emily, uh, can you? Yeah, I can. So um, the LRT is like a, it's like a train system sort of in Ottawa. Um, and as a student, you actually will, are given something called, I think it's still called a U-Pass. Um, and that's your pass to, to use the transit system in Ottawa. So you don't have to pay every single time you get on the bus. Um, you just have your pass and then you can tap it every single time um, you get onto any of our um, transit buses or trains. Um, so it makes it very convenient and easy to get around. And as a student, I never had a problem getting anywhere in the city, um, which was very nice because then it allows you to explore the city as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. I think the important next question has to be. Sorry, I just wanted to mention that um, is about a 10, maybe 15 minute bus ride. Um, you do have access to uh, to downtown Ottawa as well. We're, we're just really well located, except we're, um, it's almost like we have this feel with lots of greenery, um, lots of uh, space and water and trees and right in the middle of the city. It's, it's, it's exciting. Oh, 
Okay, perfect. Uh, next question has to do with acceptance at Carleton. Um, they're wondering what the acceptance rate is and how long does it take to receive an acceptance once you apply? So I actually don't, I don't have the number. I don't know what our acceptance rate is. And it, I do know that it's different every single year and it depends on, um, you know, how many people are applying and um, how, what the, you know, incoming averages of, of, of everyone applying. Um, but it usually takes about once we receive all of your documents, um, once we receive everything, we'll be able to mark your application as complete. And then from that time, it usually takes about four to six weeks to receive a decision um, so that we can go through your application. However, if you are applying to one of our programs that has a supplementary application, such as industrial design or architectural studies or music or social work, that time frame may be different just because we can't start looking at applications until um, the deadline for the portfolio. And so from that day, then we can start looking at everyone's applications and assessing them. So in that case, sometimes it takes shorter, um, but sometimes it takes a little longer. But a general rule of thumb is four to six weeks. All right, great. Um, let's see, we have a few more questions. Is it possible to do a double major with programs that aren't in the same faculty? That's a good question. Um, in some cases, it is possible. And then in some cases, it's not It's not super easy to do. Um, for example, if you are studying uh, journalism and you want to do uh, another major in something like psychology or even biology, um, then that might be as long as you meet the prerequisite requirements. So if you wanted to do science, then you would need to have some science courses in high school. Um, then that is possible. The areas that it would be a little bit more difficult would be if you were studying something like um, engineering, which is a very structured program, that would not be possible. But um, for many cases in our other programs, uh, it is possible. And um, yeah, we encourage students to to explore the different options because um, we want you to be able to sort of tailor your degree to um, your specific interests. All right, great. Uh, next question. What was your favorite thing about studying at Carleton? Oh, that is a really good question. Um, I would say one of my favorite things was the community at Carleton, um, because right from day one, I felt very welcomed uh, into the university and I always felt very supported. So um, as a student, you will find that the community is a, you, there's a very strong sense of community. And uh, when we're walking around campus, it during the pandemic, it, it hasn't been um it's not sort of a normal year, but in a typical year, and I think Rhonda might be able to agree, but when you're walking throughout campus, um, you'll always see familiar faces and you'll always see friendly faces. Um, the professors and the faculty and all of the staff are really here to support you. And that's how I felt as a student. I felt like I could uh, ask questions. I felt like I could go and uh, seek help. Um, I also found that um, my university experience became more rich and meaningful when I got involved as a student. Um, so really that community aspect of Carleton um, is, is what made me feel very at home. Um, and I'm hoping that it will be the same for you. But the community is definitely one of the best parts of Carleton. Maybe Rhonda, do you do you have something? Maybe you agree or you have something different that you really like about Carleton? Be the same. I staff member and I, I, um, I did go to for my undergraduate program, but you know, staff member at Carleton, much Carleton, I, because I, I feel there's that warm, inviting atmosphere, and that's what I try and do that are in you know, who reach out to for help, and that they're feeling like community, but absolutely, and be the that, um, you know, and it, it's just. Carleton, even as a staff. Yeah, exactly. I think the community is probably the, the best part about the university. Um, yeah, over to you, Tess. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I think we're just out of time now. That was the best way we could end it. Um, <laughs> if any students have any more questions, Rhonda's email is in the chat and Emily's is on screen. If you want to reach out to them today, Emily is on our platform and you can message her there. 
and feel free to take a look around at other sessions. But thank you, Emily and Rhonda, for telling us more about Carlton. Thank you so much for having us, Tess. And thank you, Rhonda, for joining me. All right, everyone have a great day and keep searching the platform. All right. Thank you.